Okay, I forgot to turn off the music before I started. So today is Sunday, again, a week anniversary of me starting my video blog, so that's pretty cool. Um, we'll see if this is even allowed to be posted since it had a song playing in the background and, you know, copyright issues and all that good stuff. Um, I'm on my way to my fellowship or church or whatever you want to call it. It's a Unitarian Universalist place. Um, and um, my grandmother was going to come with me. I went out and spent the night at her house last night because she gets lonely and Charlie was out there with me. And it, was kind of, it was kind of fun. It was like a little mini vacation. Um, but then she decided that she needed to go shopping instead. So I dropped her off at the uh, Food Lion. And uh, I called my mom and said, Mom, can you pick up Grandma after she's done with her groceries? Because i got to go to church. And that was cool. Um, so how do I feel about this, uh, this Unitarian Universalist Fellowship? So far, I'm really enjoying it. Um, the, I went one week, and then the following week, I did not go because Charlie was getting sick, and he ended up in the hospital. And then last week, I went again, and it was really nice. The two times I've gone so far have, um, they've been more of like talking about, um, well, the first time I went, we talked about Martin Luther King and, you know, persevering as people and, you know, we, we need to recognize we have a long way to go as decent human beings before we can say that we have embraced true equality. And I, I really, that was a powerful message for me because, like, I feel that way too, working in a Title I school where, like, a large, a large percentage of our population African American, and um, I don't, I don't reckon, I, I don't see it. Well, I mean, you don't want to be colorblind either. You, you don't want to say, oh, well, you know, we're, we're all the same, and not recognize that there's still a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of work we still need to do. To be completely colorblind, you're still being, you're not helping matters. But, um, you know, I fall in love with these little guys and girls um, in my class, and. I love them all just the same, but I can see how hard life is for them, and I, I can see where people are very judgmental. And um, I actually, a woman I worked with one time, who's African American, and she she was sitting there across the lunch table at me, and she made a statement. It was just an offhanded statement, but it was so powerful. She said, um, "Yes, and you know, of course, um, the lessons we have to teach our sons." are not the same lessons you have to teach your sons. And for a minute there, I didn't really understand, and then I, and then I understood, because the, the world is a very unequal place, and it is especially hard on young black guys. And it was just, it was just this quiet comment that she made, and I, it took my breath away, in its simplicity, but it's, it's depth. And, um, so that was the first, you know, so when we talked about needing to recognize that um, we're still driven, so there's still so much to unpack in our heads as far as white privilege and male privilege too. Um, though I don't function with male privilege, I, I do recognize that, I mean, I don't intentionally have white privilege, but I don't know what it feels like not to be an, a Caucasian individual, so I have to recognize my own white privilege in the fact that I don't know what it feels like to be uh, someone who is not white. Um, so then the second um, service I went to last week, it was more of a Christian teaching kind of thing. We talked about the fish and the loaves and the Unitarian Universalist um, take on that parable. And so that was cool. This time we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be going more in a Buddhist kind of vein. We're going to be talking about the metaphor of still water, which I still don't really understand what that's, so I'm really interested to go because I don't understand what they mean by the metaphor of still water. I, I don't know much about Buddhist teachings, so this is going to be really interesting. Um, the point I'm trying to make with this post is that it seems like there's just something new and different to talk about every time I go. And I like that. I like that they're not telling you any one way to think or any one way to believe or be a person or have values. And that's, I think, why I'm attending this church. Not to mention, I, I like that it's getting Charlie out meeting new people. And 
them. I really like that this church is all inclusive. I mean, it's just so casual. This um, this one um, congregation member stopped in one time and she's like, "Hey, I uh, I know we talked the last time you were here, but I'm not going to be here this time. Uh, my wife is sick." And I was like, "Oh, well, tell her, tell her, um, you know, I send my best." And then she went. You you might not be able to go to a church and just throw out, you know, "Oh, my wife is sick," and for people to be like, "Oh, send my best." Some people wouldn't be able to walk into a church as a um, single-sex couple and accept any kind, and have any kind of acceptance. But not only is there acceptance at this church, there's also just, oh, yeah, whatever, it's normal life. And I really like that. And this is what I want Charlie to grow up thinking, you know, like, oh, you're a person, and you're a person, and you're a person over there. Cool, we're all people. Uh, oh, you, you, you don't have um, the same family structure as me? Whatevs. And, and that's another reason why I'm, I'm happy to attend this, this place, this church, this fellowship. Um, so I guess that's really all I have to say. Um, happy Sunday. And um, yeah, I'm going to try to make another one next week, or tomorrow. I'm going to try to make another video in that, um, and, and that, and that we can say happy you know, presidents. Today. All right, until next time.